<laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to A Course in Miracles Forgiveness Practice Group. We've just been guided to bring through some forgiveness practices that might be helpful. So just to start, we'll just take a minute just to get quiet in case you've sort of rushed around to get here and to sit. To sit down just to watch, just to join in the Zoom. So first of all, a really big welcome, a big extension of love to everyone here from Shannon and I. A big warm hug to you. Welcome. And yeah, let's just give a, a minute just to rest our mind. Okay, so once again, welcome. Um, with Shannon and I have been guided to do a series of sort of some practical forgiveness applications because remember Jesus says that the course is is about the practical application. It's not about a play of ideas. So it's not about some ideas to discuss with people, bandy around and have big discussions about there's nothing wrong with that but Jesus wants us to apply he wants us to really do these things that's why he's got all these lessons there and he's asking us to do things in other words when we go within our mind and <clears throat> and we we look within and we look at the thoughts which you know, we're told that all the thoughts in our mind are ego thoughts and they're meaningless um, and they're based on the past. And, you know, we're looking for the through the first 30 to 50 lessons. And we're taken through, you know, really um, looking around the room and applying ideas to things in the room and in the street and thinking about all our thoughts and our images this is a practical application it's not a play of ideas so he was sort of asking us to bring through some make some videos of practical applications that might be helpful there are some you're going to feel more attracted to than others and um so we're just we're just receiving some things to offer um take what you like and leave the rest the holy spirit knows which practice of forgiveness is for you now even as i say that anything you do with a course in miracles is forgiveness even if you just pick up and read a lesson you're doing forgiveness because right-minded ideas are going into your mind you pick up the text and you read a paragraph and you think, I didn't really understand that, but it doesn't matter because what's happened is you've had some willingness to read something that you may not understand right now. And that's all it is, is just that willingness and just taking those moments throughout the day of doing something that you wouldn't normally do in an egoic world, an egoic mind. So the ego has us really caught up in externals 
and Jesus is wanting us to go within. So there's a big difference. So where forgiveness is not just what we're presenting in these videos. Forgiveness is any time, anywhere you have a right-minded thought or you remember something from the course or the Holy Spirit brings something in to your mind. Even it can be a word, like someone shared this week. They just got the word love and they felt the message was just, just, just love everyone. And it can be that simple. So it doesn't need to be a really big practical application, but they can be useful. Uh, so we're presenting them. But just because we're presenting them doesn't mean that you need to be guilty if you don't like them and you don't use them because all the forgiveness applications have the same outcome. And so what's what's what someone really loves and uses may not be for you. So it's really important to trust that what works for you is for you and what works for someone else is for them. And just to really, really anchor in that trust that if something is working for you, um, of course, a miracles friend of mine, she just loves the lessons. She just applies the lessons to everything. She doesn't do anything else. And every time she hears me speak, she says, but I can't do that. I just apply the lessons. And I say, well, you're doing it right because that's what less, that's what Jesus says in the lessons. Just do the lessons <laughs> and apply them to all your upsets. So, but all throughout the text and is, is little prayers and things like that that might help you. So it's really good just to clarify that at the start. So you're already understanding that what's been presented is like somebody offering you a plate of food and you can pick it up and eat it or not. And the thing is that whether you do this, these forgiveness applications or not, we have to remember that our true self is already pure and whole and perfect. And we're only doing forgiveness because we believe we aren't. But once you, once you realise that, you know, forgiveness is really saying that you are already perfect and whole and that nobody's done anything because this world is just a big illusion, a big dream. Nothing's ever happened to the Son of God. He's never come into a body. He's never had to battle away in a world. You just see the folly of this whole dream world. But it doesn't mean that you don't act accordingly or look after your body. It just means that you've seen something in your mind. You've seen, you've had the realisation of truth dawn on you. And that's where we're, we're getting to. We, we, we want to eventually get to that awareness of perfect oneness in love. And the song of prayer, the song of song with God, we, that's where we want to be. And in a very, very tranquil, peaceful mind. So, so from where we are at the moment to that tranquil, peaceful mind, we're asked to do forgiveness. And forgiveness is a funny thing in the course because it's not looking at your brother and saying, I'm going to be the better person and forgive you. Because that's saying that there is something that I need to forgive. So forgiveness is like a really strange thing in the course. It's always pointing us to in forgiveness that there's nothing to forgive. And that's a really funny thing because that's the message of the forgiveness. <laughs> and so it feels strange to start to use forgiveness in the course because it feels like it's not meaty enough. It feels like it's not giving us enough, <laughs> but it's just any, any, uh, the metaphysics are the forgiveness. And that's what comes into the metaphysics, the truth of the course come in, comes in to answer the little egoic part of our mind that's doing a tantrum because it can't get its own way and it can't get all the characters all lined up to say and act the way it wants it to. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to be presenting a forgiveness um, lesson, a, a forgiveness thought process from disappearance of the universe. And I'm, I'm not sure how long that'll go for, but be, be presenting that. And Shannon's going to be then presenting um, a forgiveness process about defenselessness. And I love that because defenselessness was one of my main forgiveness practices, that theme of defenselessness. But I'm going to be presenting um, what I've been guided to present today. So thank you for joining and thank you. Thank you now for maybe some forgiveness work that you're going to do from this. So I'm pre-thinking you. So I'm just going to give, um, I'm just going to read this particular forgiveness process, talk about it um, and share a little bit about my, my own thoughts about it or something, whatever's kind of come through. So um, these are the metaphysics of the course that really is um, what is to help us to come home. So The Disappearance of the Universe was a really great book for me to read alongside the course. I read it, you know, I think I was, when I met Gary Renard, I said, look, I feel like I've read it between maybe 20 to 50 times. Um, I'm not sure because, you know, I just read it and read it and read it and read it. <laughs> um, and um, so this is a section of this if you don't like this book it doesn't matter you'll still benefit from this particular um, process but I'm going to read something from Disappearance of the Universe to start off with and this is from page 291 um, and it's just a little paragraph in the middle of that page and it says the truth is that when you are apparently awake during the day and you have your eyes open it's not really the body's eyes you are seeing with any more than when you're asleep at night it's always your mind that is seeing it's always your mind that is hearing and feeling and doing the other things you give the body's senses credit for. There is no exception to this. The body itself is just a part of your projection. So the way to understand this, and I've shared about this before, is that if you could imagine um, there's something that is projecting the body and then projecting all the feelings and then sensations and the tastes and the seeing um, and the feeling, every single thing the body feels and experiences is all part of the projection. So the projection, what, you're, what you feel is my experience is not your it's like your you are experiencing something that is being projected from another part of the mind so when we look around and we you know because we can like look around and it looks like part of the room I can't see because my eyes are here so it really feels like my eyes are seeing but it's all in the mind. It, if I'm seeing this room and you guys on a screen, that's all a part of the projection. I, where I am, my true self, is not is gotten is not here in a projection of a body. I'm never I'm never here in a projection, and um, I am with God. I am with God. I'm not here in any type of projection. 
but the part of the mind has fallen asleep and thought it was guilty and this big projection has come out and we're all like looking from the same mind that's projecting and and it's so splintered that it feels like we're all looking at diff at each other and we've all got these different projections I'm just going to call the ego the projection right so when I speak to when I'm asleep in the dream of separation and I'm believing that I am this body and I'm touching things or eating things and feeling the the hot and the coldness of the food that's all a big projection that is all par part of the dream part of the projection and it's an experience that is that is causing my mind to believe that I'm here in a body in a dream of separation and you even though I'm not sure how you're understanding that or what if you're getting any sense of that as I share about it but at the start it can feel very startling and maybe even fearful to think to hear that but as you hear it and as you understand it and uh, the more often you hear it the more you used to get you get used to this idea that this is all a projection and that your body and everything the body goes through and all the little things the body does um it, what happens is as you start to take this on and you believe more in it because it makes more sense to you because you think well what is the world and this is all part of looking at well who am I and where am I and what am I doing here and what's the purpose of it all and that's why we've all turned to the course of miracles and disappearance of the universe for me as well to help answer these questions and to start to really unwind from what I think is going on and that I was born from bodies and that I've got my own life and that I just wander in and out of situations and events and I have all this angst and suffering and annoyance and anger and irritation and then and then I just die you know I get sick and die and you just start to think, well, this is this is the life of the ego. The ego is putting is that's that's what we can, we see. <clears throat> we all see that. And part of what I'm presenting here about how um, we're not even in a body; it's the projection that we are in a body. And as much as you might feel some resistance to this message um that's okay but keep listening to it keep listening to the reading the books and the teachers that are really teaching this in how it is because it's the only way you can become free because if you hold any idea that you're really in a body and that you'll really have this life here and the ego what Jesus says you'll make a thousand compromises to this message you don't want to it because the ego wants to think that it has an important life and it wants to you know you hear people say you know I want to do something so I'm remembered you know it wants to think its life is important but the course is the way out and by really accepting and understanding this teaching it works it all this works together to heal our mind because it means that nothing we're experiencing here is our true reality and in fact we're not here but it seems that it is so we can't deny it but we're not and it feels like a paradox oh my god I've got to hang on to that I'm not here but I am how do I work with that you will you will be able to work with the paradox the Holy Spirit helps you so we all go through it. So did I. Just like, how can this one, this be and this be? You, know? you will be helped and we have this group and you've got course friends that can help you and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and all these lovely um, messages in the Course in Miracles and Disappearance of the Universe. 
So it doesn't mean that you just, it's most important not to deny the body, but it's just important to use it for forgiveness. So if you find yourself really liking something, a flavor or not liking something, you can just, just tell yourself that I'm a dream character putting dream food into a dream body. This has no meaning. Whatever I'm tasting is really has no flavor because you're it's a dream. And this can really help you get past all this seriousness about I can only eat that and I can't eat that and I have to wear that and I have to have this type of lighting and because this this particular metaphysics of the of the course really hammers home that I am not a body. I'm never in a body and I'm dreaming this the not me, Kate's dreaming this dream, but the dream is coming from part of the mind. And as you sit and contemplate these teachings, it will really help you. You'll get a realization. There'll be some spark um some aha moment and it will really help you so um as you attain mastery you know the movie you're watching is all your projection it's not coming from someone else's mind because there is only one mind that's why all judgment is folly yes the projection you call the universe is coming from a different split off level than the one you are currently experiencing so it's always important because some people make the mistake that they their little mind as they're understanding it is projecting it it's not it's like um it's like okay so imagine um a virtual reality game and you're the character in the and i've shared this before about it because i love this analogy about being a virtual reality character and the projection is done by you know like a computer and it and it's made the hills and the buildings and the workplaces and everything is set up and you as the character in that if you've got your um, virtual reality glasses on and you're seeing um um just a moment, Nikki, I'll answer that question in a minute. Um, if you've got your virtual reality glasses on and you're watching yourself as the avatar, um, that's so the, the game is being projected from somewhere else. You've got the glasses on, so you're having your own little idea about you in in a in a game. And what's happened for us is that we've done this game to try to hide out from God. But it's sort of like um, if you were, if you had your virtual reality glasses on and you're seeing yourself as an avatar and you've got, <clears throat> you've got an awareness that I'm here with the glasses on and I'm watching myself as a character in a virtual reality game. And then all of a sudden you forget that you've got the glasses on and you just take yourself to be that character and all of a sudden your whole mind's invested in that character's survival and safety. And you're just like, I can't die. My life is really valuable. I've got to go and help this person and I've got to go and to fix that avatar and I've got to do that, I've got to do that. And you'll you'll um, have some ideas that there's something that's punishing you, you know, because we we do when we find ourselves here, we think God's punishing us that He's not here for us. So um, this oh sorry, so Nikki asked me what disappearance what page from disappearance is two hundred and ninety one. That's why it seems real if you let it be real. So when we feel ourselves to be really in a body and we touch something and we say, say I'm touching my computer laptop 
here. Say I'm touching it and I feel there's a sensation. I feel like my fingers are really touching that. What I tell myself is that the character that's been projected is touching something. It's not me. I'm back with God, dreaming of exile, dreaming of a horrific world. And so this teaching, wherever you are in your journey of coming to accept this teaching and really sitting and contemplating it, so what I'll do, what I'll allow you now just to do is take a few minutes just to contemplate. It's stretching, going to feel like you're stretching your mind to do this. But I want you to really feel into those two things that I've talked about. Talked about that there's a mind that's projecting you as a body and you're not really here. Or you can think about putting on virtual reality glasses and seeing yourself as an avatar. Watch yourself go through the virtual reality game. And then forget that you've got the glasses on and feel yourself to be that virtual reality character, that avatar. And feel yourself in a world a game and feel how serious you're taking it. Just give you a few minutes to contemplate this idea. Yeah, if you're the character in the virtual reality game and you've forgotten that you've got the virtual reality glasses on and you're not the character, I want you to just keep keep as that character for a while. Just feel yourself to be, look, you might even, if you're female now, you might be male in the virtual reality game or you might be you know, something that looks very different to the body form that you have at the moment. So try to make yourself a little bit different in that virtual reality game. And then I want you to now that you've had a little bit of thought put to that, what if you just decided in that virtual reality game that you were just going to be happy? that nothing could harm you because you weren't that character. What if you just said, I'm just going to be, love everyone. I'm playing a game here. This is not, this, this, there's not, I, I'm invulnerable here. I can't die. But here I am in the game and the game's always on. 
So the only choice I have in this game is to take it seriously and think that, that, that my true self can die or I can realise that I'm not here, that my true self can't die and that I'm free to live and love and do whatever I feel like doing in this virtual reality game. I don't have to deny that I'm touching something or seeing something or hugging my friend. I don't have to deny it. I can just say, this is just a game. It's a dream. It's a virtual reality game. Just playing and a character here. The only option I've got, I can't get out of the game as yet. But my only option here is to really feel that because I'm invulnerable, because I can't die, I'm free. I'm free to love. I'm free to laugh. I'm free to see that if my character in the virtual reality game dies, that it just pops up again. It just comes back. Like virtual reality games, there's no death. And there will be a time where I don't come back into the game. Because I don't need to. I've seen it all. I've seen that it's that I'm I'm not this character. I'm just playing a part. And now I'll just let myself play the part of love. I realize that I'm love and all the barriers against love have dropped away. I'm free. To see yourself in the game as being free. See yourself doing things. Just let your mind wander. What would you do? What would you do if you had no cares? You weren't trying to ward off death all the time. You didn't have concerns for this little life. <laughs> you were free. You were just in a virtual reality game. You wake up in the morning and you look out the window and you're like, ah, oh, look at all the trees somebody's somebody's put into this game look at all the little birds that are flying around and the butterflies in this game and you might see some news about wars and people dying and you say oh nobody can die So I can be in the virtual reality game. I, I can have a choice. I can either take it very seriously and spend all my days and nights upset. Or I can take it lightly. I can travel lightly. 
I can just open my arms and love everyone. I can float like a butterfly. So as you look around where you are now, in the room you're in. Just think of it that someone's made a virtual reality game. Just say they've made this room like that. It's part of the game. You either enjoy this game or you don't. It's your choice. That's it. But the key to enjoying it is knowing you're a character in a game, a figure in a dream. And so you've had some children and some grandchildren. You've got parents. It's like the Sims game my daughter used to play many years ago. All right. I'm not up to date with um, virtual reality games because I don't, see anyone playing them I only know from when my kids used to play them so I'm going to be probably referring to some old games but I remember her getting really upset that she had to keep feeding her baby and she had to get a job <laughs> she was like 10 or 11 but even when we die in this dream nothing dies we're not here and if we can really, really, really come to embrace this teaching, it lightens it up. That's why we were skipping last week as little children. I'm getting tears in my eyes now. That's why we were skipping. Because we're skipping in this virtual reality game. I mean, really, there's nothing to take seriously when who we are can't die, can't be affected by anything here. We are created by love and that's where we are. So the actual forgiveness um, process, uh, it's on page 256 of Disappearance of the Universe. Is called True Forgiveness, a Thought Process Example, and it leads on from what I was just talking about. So this is the process that we're meant to share. And when we put it up, when we put the video up on YouTube and the Facebook page, we'll put this little, we'll put the prayers in that we're using. So we'll put this prayer in. So you don't need to worry about stopping and writing it down now. Just let it just let it come through. Just listen to these words. So when we get upset with someone, we say this to them, you're not really here. If I think you were guilty or the cause of the problem, and if I made you up, then the imagined guilt and fear must be in me. Since the separation from God never occurred, I forgive both of us for what we haven't really done. Now there is only innocence and I join with the Holy Spirit in peace. So we start to see that our brothers aren't even here. What we think of real characters, you know, doing something to me, we start to see that everything we think they're doing is coming from thoughts in our own mind and we can choose different thoughts. No one ever get no one. We're in a relationship with everyone through our thoughts. We relate to everything and everyone through our thoughts. We can't know anything. We can't, we can't know anything except through our thoughts. Jesus says, I'm only affected by my thoughts. So when you enter the virtual reality game, you don't know anybody or anything about that game. You can only know it through your thoughts. 
which is the meaning I put on it. So my thoughts, the egoic thoughts, put the meaning on what I see. So I'm in a relationship with my thoughts about everything and everyone. And those thoughts um, are untrue. There's nothing going on here. So we're winding back, we're going up the ladder and we're going right up to the top of the ladder where we see that we're not a body, we're not in a world. We've made stuff up through the egoic thought system and we're free. We've dreamed a dream. The son of God, the one son of God mind fell asleep and dreamed this dream, made a virtual reality world. And our job is to unwind from the seriousness of it all. We took that idea seriously. And so to reverse it, we have to not take it seriously. And come to know that the creator that loves us and is with us still knows not that we're here because we're not here. And either are you. We're not here in bodies. So the so the way I experience it now is that my mind is with God, but I'm still the function now, the body's just repurposed. And the what the ego made is now given another purpose. And that's what we all are here to do. Is to just repurpose it to be the extension of God's love. To let ourselves hear this inner wisdom and follow it. And experience the oneness with God. So to do that, we have to unwind from the seriousness of what we made. So... I'm just going to read one other little thing to finish that off and then hand over to Shannon. This is from the hero of the dream uh, in the Course in Miracles, uh, chapter 27, uh, section 8, paragraph 10. The secret of salvation is but this, that you are doing this unto yourself no matter what the form of attack this still is true whoever takes the role of enemy and of attacker still is this the truth whatever seems to be the cause of any pain and suffering you feel this is still true for you would not react at all to figures in a dream Figures in a virtual reality, great, great, virtual reality game, you knew that you were dreaming. In other words, it's being dreamed by part of our mind and we can get back to that part that's walled off because we're only aware of one part. But you will, as you contemplate these teachings, you will see the part of your mind that projected the dream that is all we all are about in that one mind and we do step through this as we go home let them be as hateful and as vicious as they may they could have no effects on you unless you fail to recognize it is your dream now you have to be really careful that you understand how this is what he's saying is he wants you to take ownership and I think I've shared before that I came to see that I had a really deep desire for someone to be the guilty one in my life so I could keep projecting onto it, to that character, and make that character the guilty one in my projection. And that this, this requires a lot of honesty. We have to accept the Course's teachings completely and work within them 
to have these aha moments and realizations they will you know there's no uh, easy way to say it but they're, they're, it's not an easy course you will find it difficult at times but if you stick with it it is the way home and it will result in such beauty and such freedom and such love but you will go through some difficult times because you're going to want to keep going and try to grasp back at the world and think no no I was better off when I just was in the ego and not doing this forgiveness and not thinking about these other teachings but you'll be caught because you've already the reason why you're already studying the course is you've seen that there's there's no uh, there's nothing to get so you do have to go some through some uncomfortable periods and some fearful periods, but they won't last long, right? They won't last long. And you need to really trust and come. And look, just this is so why it's so practical. I've given you a practical application of it today just to see, wow, if I just looked around this room and said, this is just a big projection, this is just all a big projection, what would I be like living in my life now? How would I be if I couldn't die and everybody that dies just pops up again and just takes on a different avatar? There's a lightness, there's less seriousness. You don't have to live a life to leave and something behind for people to know or you know, think about you are one to be remembered. What? A character in a dream being remembered? So use this analogy of a virtual reality game. Bring some lightness to it. Skip along. You know, get onto a, go for a walk and get on a path and skip. I mean, literally do it. Skip along. Sing out loud. Smile. Laugh at everyone that you see. Just say, oh, I'm being my happy self today. <laughs> I'm just taking the virtual reality game lightly today. You just let go of all the seriousness that, that you know, I've got to ward off death. Oh, gosh, I've got to stop death. Death, death. Oh, no, I can't stand death. So what? There's no death. There's no death. You don't die. And once you get that, you know, it really starts to bring that freedom in. So that's my presentation today from bringing in the metaphysics in a way that I hope you could really get, get some feeling of how it's helpful. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'll pass, pass it over to Shannon now. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, I remember I was in um, Home Depot after I had this revelatory experience and I actually skipped down the, <laughs> I'm skipping down the aisle and people were looking at me like I was, yeah, I was crazy, but it was definitely fun and freeing. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about defenselessness a little bit. And um, I think the first time that I did lesson 153, and he says, um, in my defenselessness, my safety lies. I didn't understand that at all. Because for me, if I didn't defend myself, then I would get walked all over somehow, or, you know, people would um, take advantage of me or whatever. I kind of had to say, you know, no, or whatever. And I completely misunderstood the whole point because what he's talking about with defenselessness is pretty much what Kate was just talking about. Um, but when I was doing that lesson for the first time, I asked him to show me, I, I was sitting in meditation and I asked Jesus, I said, show me defensiveness. And then um, I just felt this contraction. It was, it was almost like it was too much pressure on my body to even handle. <laughs> and then I said, um, show me defenselessness. And it was this open, expansive feeling where I felt like a complete weight was lifted off my shoulders. And I was just pulled back into this um, really light feeling. 
And so in, in able in, in like experiencing that it was it was quite beautiful because I was able to see okay well I definitely don't want to feel like I did when he showed me defensiveness <laughs> and so I'm willing to learn and be defenselessness and I'm actually I'm feeling right now maybe invite everyone to close your eyes and let's just go through that exercise and perhaps you can feel what yeah, what I felt during that time. So just take a deep breath. And let's just invite Jesus, Holy Spirit in and say, show me defensiveness. And now let's just ask him to show us defenselessness. Hopefully you felt felt a difference there um, and you can feel the expansiveness of defenselessness because as what Kate was saying earlier, when we, when we see ourselves as a body and we're starting from that point, we're instantly against everything else. There, there's no escaping that. So it's behind the body. It's like knowing the that we are behind all of it, that we can be defenseless, like knowing that we're a character in a virtual reality game. So the defenselessness is where our safety lies because in defenselessness, we are not identifying with a body and we are identifying with God, our true identity. So, one of the ways to kind of achieve this idea of defenselessness is something I had about three weeks in a row where I just kept hearing Jesus telling me to lay down my arms. Every time I turned around, he was, I was hearing his voice saying, lay down your arms. And one of the lessons that he says this in is lesson 170, there is no cruelty in God and none in me. And I'm just going to read one paragraph, paragraph two from lesson 170. And it really ties in a lot with what Kate just talked about. So I, I love it when that happens. <laughs> We're guided and it's just so, it's so tie, tied in together. So he says, how thoroughly insane is the idea that to defend from fear is to attack. For here is fear begot and fed with blood to make it grow and swell and rage. And thus is fear protected, not escaped. Today we learn a lesson which can save you more, save you more delay and needless misery than you can possibly imagine. It is this, you make what you defend against and by your own defense against it, is it real and inescapable? Lay down your arms and only then do you perceive it false. It's just one of the most powerful paragraph as far as defenselessness goes. And I wanna just, I'm, I'm feeling for us to just all kind of just practice this, practice laying down our arms right now. So 
an exercise that he kind of took me through in that three weeks where all he said to me all day long was lay down your arms was to just take, you know, kind of close, close our eyes and kind of take a deep breath in through our nose. And then when, when you exhale, you just exhale out and say, I lay down my arms. And so I'd like for you to just try that maybe for like a minute or two, just keep taking deep breath in through your nose. And then as you exhale out, just say, I lay down my arms and feel yourself relaxing, feel yourself letting go and feel yourself step into defenselessness. Okay, now we're gonna take this one step further. In chapter 12, section eight, the attraction of love for love, paragraph one, he says, do you really believe that you can kill the son of God? The father has hidden his son safely within himself and kept him far away from your destructive thoughts. But you, but you know neither the father nor the son because of them. You attack the real world every day and every hour and every minute. And yet you are surprised you cannot see it. If you seek love in order to attack it, you will never find it. For if love is sharing, how can you find it except through itself? Offer it and it will come to you because it is drawn to itself. But offer attack and love will remain hidden for it can live only in peace. So what we're defending ourselves against is really God. So it seems that we're defending ourselves against our brother in some way, some brother that has wronged us or some, some little, you know, microscopic virus or, you know, some other person that's attacking us. But what we're defending ourselves from is God. He tells us we attack the real world every day, every hour, every minute. And yet we are surprised that we cannot see it. And so the other place where he says, lay down your arms is in lesson 190. And this one is, I choose the joy of God instead of pain. And in paragraph eight, 
is where he says, or sorry, nine is where he says, lay down your arms. Lay down your arms and come without defense into the quiet place where heaven's peace holds all things still at last. Lay down all thoughts of danger and of fear. Let no attack enter with you. Lay down the cruel sword of judgment that you hold against your throat and put aside the withering assaults with which you seek to hide your holiness. <laughs> and so now what I would like for us to do is lay down our arms against the truth, against God. And so we're gonna try this exercise again, but what we're gonna do is as we're breathing in and, and as we're exhaling out, we're going to say, I lay down my arms, Father, I love you. I lay down my arms, Father, I am not afraid of you. I lay down my, my arms, thank you, God. I am not afraid of the light. So use your own words in this. And I'm just going to give a little extra time here for this one. I really want you to feel yourself being completely defenseless against God. Father, we are like you. No cruelty abides in us, for there is none in you. Your peace is ours, and we bless the world with what we have received from you alone. We choose again and make our choice for all our brothers, knowing they are one with us. We bring them your salvation as we have received it now. And we give thanks for them who render us complete. In them we see your glory and in them we find our peace. Holy are we because your holiness has set us free and we give thanks. 
Amen. And I just invite you to remember to lay down your arms whenever you're tempted to judge anyone or attack anyone or attack God. Lay down your arms and feel the innocence that we are. Kate, I'm not sure if you wanted to, if you had any other forgiveness practices to share. <laughs> no, that's, that's it for today. It's uh, just a short, short group for today. So I really love, uh, I love the two analogies that have come through today for you to take the world light, lightly by knowing that this little avatar that we've put on and we thought in the virtual reality game that it was born and we'd had parents and we were going to die it's really lovely to know that this is just a whole big projection that is nowhere and we can just, you know, pass it by. So we take the world, we take, what we take is the practical application of these two forgiveness practices so keep think keep walking around just you know just walk around this world and just say look at look at the great things that they put into this virtual reality, virtual reality game <laughs> just keep reminding yourself that nothing real can be threatened and that where we are is not our true home we're just and we can we can just look at this world differently. And Sharon, Shannon mentioned the real world. And the real world is just seen. And I've seen it. I'm seeing it. <laughs> and it's just seeing when you remove all meaning from what you're seeing. And it doesn't mean that it's not the seriousness of the ego. It just sparkles and shines. The virtual reality game is, I mean, first of all, it's seen as God. And then it just becomes, it just becomes the nothingness that it is. There's, there's a joining in your mind with God so complete that there's just no interest in this world in terms of thinking that it's got it. It can do anything to you or change your changeless state. So take these two practices with you during the week. Walk around. You've got some children in this in this virtual reality game. Look after them, but have fun. Be, be that mind that um is not concerned about anything. Know that your children are just your brothers in the dream with you and it's they're here to wake up, not to find, try to get the virtual reality game to work because it's it doesn't work. Nothing here works, right? So be above the battleground. Be above the virtual reality game. And how we get above it is by knowing 
that it's just an illusion. It's a virtual reality game, a dream. Don't take it seriously. And just let God come into your mind. His love, let that be where you have your beingness. And with Shannon's beautiful talk and meditation about defenselessness, it is an amazing tool. It really, um, the practice of defenselessness, I too was taken through it by Jesus for many weeks, months, I think, focusing on this one attribute, this one theme. He showed me even the most subtlest of defensiveness. He just said to me, see how you defended with just that little thing now. I was like, yeah, it was just so subtle. He said, it's still a defense. So just notice any type of defense during the day and keep saying, I lay down my arms. I just want the peace of God. I lay down my arms. To keep defending is keeping the reality game as real and serious and you know, oh, I've got to get this person to agree with me or understand me or see me or acknowledge me. And, ah, oh, that's just tiring trying to get someone to agree with you. Or just let it go. This is all about coming within your mind and you having the peace of God, not getting anybody else to do anything. The characters all have their own journey. Because they're feeding from the same mind. The ego is splintered off and we're all coming back together. The one mind is becoming whole again. So our job is just to do our part. Focus on the defenselessness. That's a really, it's such a powerful practice. If you start practicing being defenseless, like have no opinion, just letting everyone, everything be as it is. I let everything be as it is. So much joy and happiness can be had by not needing anyone to understand you or get you or like you or do anything for you or help you or just let go of all that and just feel into this amazing, beautiful strength of defenselessness. Your safety lies within, in your father, not in anything in the world, not in getting any character to do anything. Your safety, your complete safety is within you, in God, in this most beautiful sea of love, the vast eternal love of God. That's where our safety lies. So, you know, like that little saying, right, let them be as vicious or misunderstanding or unhelpful. Let them all, let every character be as it is. It can have no effect knowing that this is a dream and I'm with God. I am with God. That's, that's how we come to have peace of mind, by letting go of valuing what is valueless. And starting to value God and his love. So lay down your arms. See it as a virtual reality game. And just let go. Be that leaf. Like if you look, uh, once I was, I think, I'm not sure whether I shared this here, but I was walking along, out for a walk, and I was, at a, I was a couple of suburbs away from where I usually walk, and there was a little creek. And there were some leaves on the water. And as I looked at it, the spirit said, be a leaf on the water. Lay back and be carried by the Holy Spirit, which is the, the water moving you around. Let go, completely let go. And let the spirit carry you wherever you need to be. And whatever you need to say, just really relax and completely let go of everything. Just surrender to that spirit carrying you, taking you, and just let the flow be in that stream and the flow 
for yourself, having no cares and no worries. And that's it. That's the freedom. And so I started to imagining myself just that leaf. And sometimes the water would take you into a little area by the side of the river, the creek, and you might stay there with some other leaves for a little while and then the little would just carry you off. Maybe you're on your own for a little while and you're just carefree. You can share this message with others and they can be attracted to your happiness and your carefreeness. You've laid down your arms, you've laid back, let go and let him lead the way. Thank you, everyone, for this beautiful joining. And let's, uh, let's uh, unmute. We'll finish the recording now. Thank you.